Hi everyone, I hope you are healthy and doing well. In this video, I will take you along for an adventure to one of the seven national wonders of the world. The seven day itinerary is adventure packed with endless breathtaking sights, including Grand Canyon, Antelope Canyon, Zion National Park, and Las Vegas. So let's get to it. Day one is transit day. I'm from New York and the flight from New York to Las Vegas is just shy of six hours. We rented a car for the duration of our trip and stayed the first night near the airport. Bright and early on day two, we started our road trip to Hoover Dam, which is just 40 minutes from Vegas. The dam sits at the border of Nevada and Arizona and is free to visit. There is a small parking fee and an optional tour inside the dam. The Hoover Dam was constructed during the Great Depression and took five years to build. You can walk or drive through the dam. Next, we continued our way to Grand Canyon, which is just under four hours from Hoover Dam. Like most national parks, lodging options are limited, so be sure to book well in advance if you're planning a trip. We stayed at the Maswick Lodge South. Candidly, we were a bit greedy with this trip and had a stacked itinerary, so our time at Grand Canyon was only for about a day and a half. That just meant that we had to pick and choose our activities wisely and make the most of our short time there. There are shuttle buses that provide transportation between the Visitor Center, Matter Point, Yavapai Geology Museum, South Kaibab Trailhead, and Yaki Point. Did you know that Grand Canyon is bigger than the entire state of Rhode Island? The Grand Canyon is a mile deep, 277 miles long, and 18 miles wide. It was carved over 6 million years by geological activity and erosion by the Colorado River. After checking in, we took the shuttle bus out to Hermit's Rest Road, which took us to a viewpoint where we settled down for a small picnic while enjoying the majestic canyon sunset. To kick off day three, we took an early morning shuttle to watch the sunrise from Hopi Point. After the sunrise, we took the Hikers Express shuttle bus to the South Kaibab Trail for our hike. There are a few trail options here that range from two and a half to 20 miles round trip. We started at the South Kaibab Trailhead, past the Ua Point to Cedar Ridge, which is a three mile round trip and had to turn back around as we got caught in an unexpected thunder hail storm. We had checked the weather beforehand and no signs of thunderstorms, but mother nature had her own plans. The hailstorm was both thrilling and terrifying all at the same time. The hail pieces were huge and lightning seemed to strike so close to the ground. My husband, well, boyfriend at the time, comforted me the whole hike up and was saying, the chances of getting struck by lightning is basically non-existent. When we finally reached the top, soaking wet and got on the shuttle, the first thing the bus driver mentioned was how someone had gotten struck by lightning just a while ago. I stared at my boyfriend in disbelief, and he kept looking forward, avoiding all eye contact with me. That will definitely go down as one of the most memorable hikes of our lives. If you are enjoying this video, it would really help me out if you consider liking and subscribing and hit the notification bell so you can be first to know when new content has dropped. After drying off and checking out of the lodge, we started our drive to Page, Arizona. There is so much to see at Grand Canyon, including known and hidden caves. We will definitely have to make a trip back. The drive to Page, Arizona is about two and a half hours long. We got to Page with a little sunlight left, so we stopped by Horseshoe Bend, which is simply breathtaking. The hike to the viewpoint is quick, just a little more than half a mile, and the moment you see it, it will imprint in your memories forever. I was so enamored with this site that I ended up getting a puzzle of it, and it is now framed in our bedroom. We sat there and enjoyed the beautiful sunset. Day 4. It has always been a dream of mine to go to the wave. Due to the fragile nature of the formation, a daily lottery system was put in place that allows 10 permits a day and are available 4 months in advance. Unfortunately, we were not lucky enough to have won the wave lottery, but there is still plenty to see and here is how we spent the next 2 days. 
For the morning activity, we booked a cathedral canyon tour, which took us through astonishing slot canyons in the region, including Cathedral Hall, Four Sisters, and Thumrock. We got lucky and ended up getting a private tour. The Cathedral Canyon reminded us a lot of Antelope Canyon, but with far fewer visitors. We were able to take our time walking through the slot canyons and, of course, taking pictures along the way. Pro tip, if you're going to Antelope Canyon on the same day, you can use the Navajo permit from this tour and waive having to pay it again. In the afternoon, we booked an Antelope Canyon kayak tour. This was such a cool way to see a different side and perspective of Antelope Canyon. We were amazed at every turn. The striations in the rock formations is just unbelievable. Day 5. A trip to Page, Arizona wouldn't be quite complete without a stop at Antelope Canyon. Antelope Canyon is a slot canyon on Navajo land just east of Page, Arizona. It includes two separate scenic slot canyon sections, referred to as Upper and Lower Antelope Canyon. We booked a lower canyon tour. There is typically a tour every half hour and they are really good at moving things along. So it made us appreciate the private tour the day before that much more. After the Lower Canyon tour, we started our journey back to Las Vegas, but first driving through the Zion National Park. I can't quite describe Zion. The only word that really comes to mind is majestic. Zion is 15 miles long and 800 meters deep. The canyon walls are reddish and tan-colored Navajo sandstone eroded by the North Fork of the Virgin River. The geology of Zion includes nine formations that together represent 150 million years of mostly Mesozoic age sedimentation. It was such a cool drive and we really wished we had more time to spend at the park. But with the remaining drive ahead, we decided to forge on towards Vegas. There's nothing quite like the energetic feeling you get when you first drive down Las Vegas Strip. Everything is alive and soaring. The streets are lined with bright lit neon soaked casinos. Day 6. Our original plan was to go to Red Rock or Valley of Fire State Park for a hike, but we were pretty exhausted from all the driving and hikes from the prior days, so we decided to just spend the day in Vegas. Red Rock is a quick 30 minute drive and I would highly recommend making a trip out there. The Red Rock Formation is such a spectacular sight. Valley of Fire is an hour drive and there are quite a few hiking options including Fire Wave, White Dome, Mouse's Tank, Rainbow Vista, and Fire Canyon Overlook, perhaps on another trip. For now, we were just excited to explore everything Vegas had to offer. Everything looks so close in Vegas, but it's actually not. Definitely a great way to get your steps in if you're able to bear the Nevada heat. We weave through casino after casino on this trip. Alternatively, there is also a 24-hour rail pass that you can purchase for a nominal fee. We had so much fun going into every casino, playing a game or two, and of course consuming a beverage or two. If it's your first time in Vegas, a few great options include dueling pianos, where pianists play and the audience chooses a winner by applause, the famous Bellagio Fountain, which has a water show every half hour between 3 and 8 p.m., and then every 15 minutes from 8 p.m. to midnight. The water rockets and dances are perfectly choreographed to the music. Neon Museum, which features signs from old casinos and other businesses displayed outdoors on two and a half acres. Roller coaster rides for some thrilling excitement at the Stratosphere Tower. And no Vegas trip is complete without at least one meal at a famous buffet. For tonight, we chose my favorite. Bacchanal at Paya. The variety and quality is well worth the price. After dinner, there is no shortage of entertainment and shows. 
there is something for everyone. We picked Cirque du Soleil. On departure day, I always try to book a late evening flight so we have a full day in Vegas. We saved downtown Las Vegas for our final day. It's a fun way to spend the day and table games start at only $5. Entertainment that is easy on your wallet. Nacho Daddy nachos are also amazing while you're in downtown. For dinner, another buffet at Wynn Las Vegas. Thanks for coming along with us on this journey. If you're planning your own upcoming travel, I hope this video was helpful and can provide some inspiration during your planning process. Let me know in the comments below if there are any other hidden treasures in Vegas or Grand Canyon that is a must-see for future trips. Stay safe and be kind to yourself.